Yo, I am back with more Gantz, and I love this series. I really, really do. Uh, it is just insanity, absolute madness, absolute horror, absolute dark, bleak shit, and I love that. But like the last two, I'm reviewing the whole omnibus uh, as one, just because Gantz reads really fast, because it is mostly movement and action and telling the story through images, as opposed to just having lots of dialogue and exposition. And as I've stated before, uh, a lot of the intrigue of Gantz is not knowing what's going on and trying to figure out what's going on and why it's going on. So it really is like the lack of exposition, the lack of information. You're just on your own and you're kind of in the same spot as the characters are. So this is Omnibus Volume uh, 3. So this contains uh, 7, 8, and 9 the, of the individual volumes that it would be. And uh, it is just massive, but again, I read it in one day because Gantz just reads really, really fast, like I said. So let's talk about this. Uh, this one finishes up the, uh, the mission that they were on from the last one and gets into completely new territory for me because I am a fan of the anime. I haven't watched it in quite a while. I'm going to rewatch it here in a bit pretty soon. I wanted to catch up in the manga first, and I, I did. And this goes past that, and I, I believe the anime might have done its own thing to kind of end it because I don't remember what happens in the second half of this volume, of this omnibus, at all in the actual anime. So this is completely new, and the cliffhanger here really really got me, uh, really got me wanting more. But let's start with first uh, the Buddha statue battle. So these, you know, the Gantz crew, they're going out and they're going on the missions to kill the aliens and hopefully gain points to get their lives back. That's the whole idea, the whole point behind it. And they're dealing with these big Buddha statue things, which are basically just exactly what I just described, just Buddha statues, but are insanely powerful. Some are gigantic, and some are human size, and they're made of stone, and they're just super powerful. Um, and some of the guns don't really do a whole lot against them. But the one guy doing work in this volume is the sniper that's sitting up on top of one of the, uh, the buildings who's just, like, shooting off, like, away from everybody else. Everyone else is panicking and they're getting picked up and they're getting eaten and shit and it's just like super brutal, super violent. But this guy, the sniper, is just doing work up here and I was really sad to see him go. And what we basically get in this uh, battle against all of the Buddha monsters or the Buddha statues and whatnot is just complete and utter annihilation of everybody. Uh, everybody is killed off, and it's horrible, and it's just like, there's just this sense of hopelessness and dread that is just in Gantz, and I think that's one of the things that I really like about it, is just this, like, whole idea of absolute helplessness, because they're facing these impossible odds, like, they're facing these creatures that are just, like, way, way more powerful than, than they are, and they have to come up with strategies and ideas of how to beat them, and then you finally beat a creature or an alien, and you had this, like, very brief millisecond sigh of relief, and then something else shows up that's even more powerful. You're like, how can you possibly defeat this thing that they're fighting right now? And then after, you know, Dozens of people are killed, and they finally defeat it, and you're like, holy crap, that was ridiculous. Something else even more powerful comes out just immediately after that, and you're just like, how, like, how can you, like, possibly do, you know, this game of Gantz is not fair to anybody. It's not fair to any of the characters. It's not fair to, doesn't matter if you're young or old, if you're a grandma, you will die. Does not matter. You are getting killed. Um, and, and the characters do just periodically get killed. They meet this, uh, the main, I guess what you could say, the boss battle is this Buddha statue that's human size. I mean, it's tall. It might be like six foot or something like that. But it has all these hands. And each hand has a different weapon that can do something. It does have swords and knives. It also has acid that it's throwing on people that eats people away. And it also has this clock that can heal itself. So as long as the clock exists, uh, you damage the creature, but the clock will like rewind back basically and like rewinds the creature back to a point when he was healed. So again, like the creature itself, super powerful, has all these weapons, has all these knives and shit, has this acid and can regenerate. And you are just, yeah, you're wearing these enhanced suits that, you know, can give you boosts of strength and speed and stuff, and you have guns, but 
you're still fighting something that is just way beyond the capacity. And not to mention, you're not like a trained soldier or something like that. You're just a human that's out here having no idea what's going on. I mean, unless you've, you've been through the Gantz game before, as the, our three main characters have. But even so. Um, so, some of the other characters' names I'm not going to... I don't quite remember, but there was the one character that had the longer hair that looks a lot like K, and a lot of the times when I was reading it, I was kind of mistaking K for this character, and I felt like an idiot every time I did that, but they just re look really, really similar, just this character has longer hair. Um, him and this one girl that's a really shy, that's been like kind of away from the battle, um, they get a very, very brief moment where they're together, and they're facing off against this Buddha thing, and then it cuts to the two of them kissing, and you're like, oh, okay, like, you know, they're finding some kind of affection for each other or whatever. And then the very next panel, you see that they're just upper torsos and, like, their legs are completely gone and have been disintegrated by this creature. And you're like, okay, well, I guess they're out of here. <laughs> and then the creature starts attacking and it throws the acid towards Kato. And, uh, um, Kishimoto, of course, we know that she's had a crush on Kato this entire time. She was staying with Kei. Um, in their real lives and they're like when they're back in the human well it's all in the human world but when they're back into their normal lives and Kay of course kicked her out because she wasn't giving up any ass you know take that for what it is uh, so you know and she's had this crush on Kato the entire time so she didn't want Kay in that way she never felt sexually attracted to him or anything uh, and never felt affection for him but she's she just stayed with him because she knew where he lived. She figured it out, and so she was staying with him. And, you know, he realized that she wasn't staying with him because she liked him. She was just staying with him because she had no place to go. And so, you know, he was he got fed up with that, and he kicked her out. Well, uh, when the acid is thrown towards Kato, uh, Kishimoto jumps in the way, and she literally, like, she's a main character. Keep in mind, this is a main character. Uh, this is someone that's been here since the very beginning. I don't know if it was chapter one, but it was like right, right in the very first beginning of Gantz. Okay, so we could maybe think that Kei, Kato, and Kishimoto are safe because they are our three main characters. While she jumps in front of Kato, the acid spills on her, and she loses her fucking legs, her torso, everything from the stomach down just disintegrates. And this is just what's the the insanity of Gantz is just that you can have a main character, someone that, and she's got a whole separate story going on too, like because she has another version of herself that's alive, that's living her life. That's why she couldn't go back home because, for whatever reason, when she when you die, you get transported to the Gantz room, but her original self is still alive. I don't know. We don't know if the people in the Gantz are copies or if they're the actual person. There's whatever. That's a whole separate thing. So she has her own storyline going on, but it doesn't matter because she just fucking dies because anybody can die in the Gantz world. And that's just the most insane thing about it is that you know no one is safe. And actually, immediately after that, our main, main character, our, you know, our number one, our pro tag, our, uh, you know, our main guy here, he gets his arm and his leg slashed off. Now, we do know that uh, if you are still alive by the time the Gantz game ends, you get transported back to the room with all your injuries healed. But you have to stay alive. Um, you know, it doesn't matter. If, if you bleed out, you bleed out, and that's just how it is. So, we're witnessing here an intense massacre of all of these characters. Uh, and what else can I say here is just, um, you know, the absolute hopelessness of it. Just the fact that the odds are so immense and the characters are so underprepared for everything that's happening. Um, we also get the one chick that looks like Angelina Jolie from Tomb Raider who uh, Kay had sex with basically out of spite when Kishimoto wouldn't do it and um, you know she actually like wound up having an affection for Kay because she's seeing how he's doing in all these battles and you know she's kind of like turned on by him and wants to be his girlfriend essentially like they don't know each other that much but you know this is a shared experience that they're going through so She's like, you know, we, once we get out of this, we can uh, we can be in a relationship. And Kay is basically just telling her, like, no, I only had sex with you because you look like you would. And Kay right now, he it's not that he's not being honest, but he's in a spot where, you know, he's, le he's lost his lar arm and leg, and she's staying with him, and he wants her to go. So in a way, he's trying to protect her. In a way, he's saying, like, just get the fuck out of here. Don't worry about me. I didn't care about you anyways. I only wanted to have sex with you. Um... And at the time it happened, that is actually probably the truth. Um, through this, though, he did kind of 
get an affection towards her as well. So he does feel for her. He does have feelings and emotions for her at this point. But he is both trying to save her as saying, you know, for her to get out of here and it doesn't matter. But he is also kind of letting out the truth because at the time that they had sex, it really was just an impulse. Like, I'm horny. This chick looks like she'll give it up easy kind of thing. So a little bit of both. But again, doesn't matter because she dies. She gets absolutely killed. Oh, by another ability that this Buddha thing has, which is this like laser beam type thing, basically like the predator that can just like slice you in half or blow you up. So there's that too. And it winds up being Kato is the only guy left. Uh, K is still alive, but he lost his arm and leg. He's bleeding out. Everyone else is dead. Literally everyone gets killed by this Buddha thing. And it's just K. And the Buddha thing eats the brain of another one of the members of the Gantz team. And then something very interesting happens is it gains the ability to speak. And it basically, uh, this I thought was really interesting because it really, it asks Kato why these people are here and why they are killing them. So basically it frames it in a way that the aliens are just defending themselves. That they're not monsters going out and just eating these people because they eat people. These people came in with guns, with weapons, and attacked them, and now they're defending themselves. So if it gains the ability to speak and it says it is trying to communicate with the human character, Katsu. And actually the statues have been trying to communicate with them since the very get-go. It's just they speak a language that the humans don't know and it's all scribbled out and it's it's weird and different. And so this leads me to wonder what actually is going on with Gantz even more because it's sending people out to kill these aliens. But the aliens themselves, even from the very get-go, from the very first one, with the onion alien where it was just this little kid looking thing uh, alien that was killed and then the the taller bigger you know more adult looking one basically attacked the characters only after that happened um, and it seemed like before too with the bird aliens that they're in the suits of people that are just walking by and it wasn't until they were disturbed that they really started going on the offensive and killing with their like light beam thing so it seems as though Gantz is targeting aliens that aren't necessarily aggressive but become aggressive once attacked. So is Gantz just some sort of like cruel joke where it's just sending people out to kill these things that really aren't a threat, but just to get them off the planet? Like, is it just trying to rid the planet of aliens? Like, is that the goal? It doesn't matter if the alien is hostile or not. It just wants them all gone. That's what it seems. And of course, Kato has no answer, but he can't he think of anything else except his younger brother that he just wants to get back to. And so he's just fighting for his life, doing everything he can to destroy this Buddha thing. And like I said, he finally does. But then the like true form of the alien creature comes out of the Buddha statue. And now he has another thing to fight. And it's just like he just spent every ounce of effort and vigor that he had to defeat this thing. And now there's something else. And you're just like, oh my God, how can this go on any longer? It's like painful to watch your like or to read. And you're like, how can this possibly go on any longer? My God, give this character a break. And it doesn't. <laughs> so Kato manages to kill the alien, but not before the alien gets in one final strike on Kato and kills him. Our second main, of our main three characters, two are killed during this battle. And this is only volume seven and eight of like a 30 volume long, you know, series. And so K is the only one to survive. He lost his arm and leg, but he gets transported back to the room and he's healed, and he's the only one there, and he breaks down, and how can you blame him? You know, all of his, his two friends that he met, or, well, he knew Kato before, but, you know, the friends that he made that survived the first two adventures that were really, really difficult on their in their own right, you know, they'd gone through so much, and it just leaves him, and it really got me thinking about what would happen, I mean, it doesn't happen this way, and I'll get to that in a second, but you just go through all of these horrible traumatic experiences with people, and they wind up dying and they're gone and you're just transported back yourself and then you would have to imagine that the next time Gantz restarts it would again have a whole new group of people plus you that don't know what, what's going on and you don't know everything that's going on but you know enough to know what you have to do and I just couldn't imagine like having to explain to people over and over and over again what's happening having them not believe you having them get periodically killed off after you know having your friends 
die these horrible deaths. It's like, what would that do to a person? Like, what would you, you're transported to this room, you know you gotta fight aliens, there's all these people, like, what's going on? Blah, blah, blah. You know, this is heaven, this is hell, I'm gonna go home, I can't get out. And all these people are, and you're just sitting there like, you know, I've, I just don't even have the energy to even attempt to try to explain it to these people. That's what I feel like would happen with Kay. Um, but before we get to the next Gantz mission, Kay, of course, goes back to his normal life, everything goes back to normal, which again would be traumatic in its own way. And two things that happen um, in his normal life. And this situation is very, very intriguing as well. And I kind of wish they stuck a little bit more with this before going back to the next Gantz mission. But one thing is a new student shows up um, who's this tall, handsome boy that all the girls have a crush on immediately, of course. But he comes up to Kay and he asks him point blank, you know, do you know about Gantz? And Kay's just like, what the fuck? Like, thinking, like, are there other rooms with Gantz? Is this guy from there? But when he starts to think about it, um, he he has that little, uh, that same kind of beeping trigger in his mind that where if you go outside of the, um, the zone of Gantz where the game is taking place, if you go outside, your head will explode. Basically, uh, the same kind of trigger starts to go off. So it's as if he talks about Gantz in his normal life to anyone again, his head will explode. So he doesn't say anything because he feels this beeping happening and he's like, oh shit, you know, I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut. And he's like, I know, I don't know. And this new kid comes to Kay's place and shows him online that there is a website that was created by someone talking about what Gantz is. And basically some it's this whole thing that's online that people have construed that some people think it's fact and some people think it's fiction and some people you know think it's just a guy writing a science fiction story and other think people think it's a real account of something that happened and we kind of conclude that it's the character Nishi the character that you know really didn't give a fuck about anybody before um, that died in the Gantz mission against the bird alien things that was writing this so apparently you can't speak about Gantz but you can write about it so I guess that's one way to get everything out. And the reason he, uh, the new character approached Kay about it is because Kay is specifically mentioned in the Gantz story. So uh, whoever wrote it, assuming it's Nishi, did not go out of their way to change the characters' names or anything like that. He literally talks specifically about these people. And so Kay is like, oh, you know, it must just be a coincidence and yada yada. Like, I know nothing about this. And you could tell that he wants to talk about it, but apparently he can't like he's not allowed to talk about it that's just part of what Gantz is I guess and his head will explode if he does so he keeps his mouth shut and the new character is still suspicious about him but leaves him be for the most part K also then tries to go to the Kishimoto character uh, not the one that died in the Gantz game but there's the copy of her that still exists and this has been a lingering story point ever since they got back from the first Gantz mission and so he tries to go to talk to her but Things don't work out very well because he's on the phone with his friend as soon as she walks by and he's talking about some girl's tits and she finds that very off-putting and then he tells her, you know, he's just trying to come up with a way to talk to her and he pretends like he's picking her up, but he name drops her and so she thinks he's a stalker and things just keep going worse and worse and it's humorous, but it's really sad too because Kay is basically always put in these positions where he's like, you know, in a vulnerable spot, he's not the badass that he is on the field of Gantz when he's actually fighting. In his real life, you know, he is the bullied guy, the guy that doesn't get the girl, the guy that makes these stupid, embarrassing mistakes, the guy that's on the toilet when he's transported into the Gantz room. Like, he just, he, he fucks it up, basically. Like, he tries to talk to her, but absolutely fucks it up. So that's a lingering story thread that's still there, and I think that that'll definitely come into play. I think with Kishimoto being dead, um, I think her copy will have... Uh, a, a point in the story like will make a point maybe she does have kind of dreams or something of what's going on with her other half in the Gantz world I don't really know um, as far as Kato is considered with him being dead and his little brother still out there I don't know if Kay will ever make an effort to reach out to Kato's little brother or anything um, but it's really really sad to see him go really really sad because he, he is a really cool character in his own right and um I really relate to Kay, the things he says, the what goes on in his head, because he really feels like a, like a teenage boy, you know, like you can relate to him in that way, um, because I, you know, I remember kind of not being in Gantz, but being in his shoes as far as his regular life is concerned, and, you know, I relate to him on that level. Um, but a new game of Gantz comes underway, and this is uh, kind of the third uh, volume that's in here, and I'll end with this. 
So he goes on the next mission, and I'm expecting like a whole, like I said, a whole group of new people to show up to be in this Gantz mission with him, but it's just him. And that's really confusing to me. Does that mean that like nobody has died within the course of time, or nobody, yeah, because they're brought to the room after they die, essentially. So has nobody been brought to this room because nobody died within this time, or is Gantz really just fucking with Kay and wanted him to do a mission by himself? I don't know. But he goes out and there's these alien creatures with these wings and whatnot and things kind of go as they usually do where you kill one and then a bunch more show up. But Kay is unsuccessful in killing them within the time limit. And he's brought back to the Gantz room. And I guess because he didn't kill them within the time limit, now all of his points that he acquired are gone. And the thing was, like, once you reach 100 points, you get your life back and you don't have to do Gantz anymore. But I guess if you run out the time limit without killing all the aliens, I guess all your points go away. So how fucked up is that? So not only has all of his friends died, not only have they gone through these grueling, hard, difficult missions to face these aliens, but now, after going through all these difficult missions, after building up his points, after killing off certain aliens and getting the points up there, now he's back down to zero. He's back down to where he started in the Gantz game. Like, how cruel can you be to your characters, you know? Uh, Hiroya Oku, what the hell, man? You love big tits and killing characters. That is 100% I can say about you, man. More power to you. Um, and absolutely giving his characters just devastating after circumstances, after devastating circumstances. So Kay is transported back to the human world, now has zero points. You know, no, he's he's as far down as you can possibly get with getting out of the Gantz game, except for the dog that's there. I don't even think the dog showed up that time. Did the dog show up? I don't even know. That is that a continuity error? Did the dog not showing up, or did the dog die with the statues? I hope not. Anyway, K failed the mission, and so he's back now in his school and uh, just living out life normally. His kids are, you know, they're playing a game and, haha, if you if you fail this game, you have to go ask this random girl out. Haha, ha, you know, just regular high school stuff. Well, while he's at high school, the alien that he didn't kill from the Gantz game has tracked him down. Now in like, I keep saying the real world. The Gantz games take place in the real world, but you're invisible to what's through the rest of the world. The rest of the world can't see you, can't perceive you. It feels like something separate. It still takes place in the real world. But no, when I say back in the real world, I basically mean back in his normal life. A game of Gantz is not in in session, is basically what I'm saying. Uh, but an alien has tracked him down to the school, comes in the school, and literally starts killing people to get to K. So K throws on, you know, he's like, "What? How did you find me? Like, this is not how Gantz works. Gantz works like you're in Gantz, you fight the aliens, Gantz is over, you go back to your normal life." But he didn't kill the aliens in the last game; they're still alive, and. Apparently, they are looking for him, and just like what was said before, the alien was like, why were you killing us? Like, I'm here to kill your compatriots, is what he calls it, um, you know, assuming that everyone in the school is friends with Kay. Basically, he's killing people to be like, you killed some of my people, so I'm killing your people, is basically the idea behind it. But, again, it goes to, like, what if this alien was peaceful? And Gantz is sending people there to kill these aliens just to rid them off the Earth, not for any kind of moral reasons, not because they're actually a threat, but just because they happen to not be from this planet. And that's what it seems like to me. And so this creature's coming back for revenge, and how can you blame the creature? And Kay's just like, like, look, I'm just doing this because I have to, you know? Like, it literally, like, have I have no stake in this game. Like, I don't even want to be here. But he doesn't get a chance to explain that to the alien, and a lot doubtful that the alien would listen anyways. I think they're communicating telepathically right now. I don't think the alien can actually speak English or Japanese, whatever. Um, and so, basically, the finale of this omnibus, this volume, deals with the alien being at the school, killing people, and with the killing of people, the cops show up. The cops can see the aliens. So, again, a game of Gantz is not in session, so that would lead me to believe that the aliens can make themselves visible. They're only invisible when they're in the Gantz game, I guess, is, is what I get out of it. So the cops are shooting it. Doesn't seem to do a lot of work. The alien is causing destruction. Um, crashes out. K grabs uh, one of the girls that the girl he was supposed to go ask out on a date, and now they're a couple, but not really. Doesn't feel anything for her, but whatever. You know, it's a teenager thing. 
Anyway, she's still alive, so he grabs her, and they jump out of the window together. He tries to save her, um, and now they're stuck in this situation. And what's great about this is just that, one, now that now things are getting shook up. Now it's not just, you know, Gantz, uh, a game of Gantz back in the real world, Gantz, real world, Gantz, real world. Now the worlds are meshing. Now it's like... Well, you didn't finish the Gantz game, and so now it's affecting you in the here and now, in the real, in real life, in your real personal life. An alien has shown up. You have no friends. Kato's dead. Kishimoto's dead. You've got no no one that understands what's going on. No one that is in this with you. You are now alone, and you are not even in the game of Gantz, and now you have to deal with this. And this is where I really like that it's going, and the anime did not cover this, and this is what I, I think is really, really cool that's happening, is because now... Just not just the game of Gantz being so overwhelming and intense and and hard to deal with, but now we're also saying that anything can happen. Now, even when Gantz isn't in session, now you could be dealing with this, and you have to deal with it by yourself. And Kay is not a heroic guy, you know. He's just an average teenage boy. Like he's not. He saved the girl, yeah, but he and he's like torn up that other people died because of him. But he's still like, what the fuck is going on? Like I don't even want to be doing this, you know. He's not a hero, you know, he's not a shonen protagonist, you know, he's not someone that's just like, I will save the day. He's someone that just, like, wants to get laid and wants to not be dealing with this and is forced into this situation, you know? So, in a way, he's a very, very human character. He's not complex in that way, but he's just, like, the fact that he's so average and ordinary kind of makes him complex because we're not used to seeing a character that's like that. We're used to seeing one that has some kind of like fancy lineage or something, or a character with, you know, potential deep inside him to be brought out, or a character that's super skilled and badass, but K is just a normal guy. He's enhanced when he puts the suit on, so is everyone else. You know, his only benefit is knowing to an extent how Gantz works. You know, that's it. And now he's lost his friends, and now people are dying because of him. So what does that do? What does that weight that goes on his shoulders where he he feels like he failed? You know, he, he failed the mission, lost his points, lost his friends, and now things are affecting his real world. So, I don't know. It leaves on a cliffhanger there, and I'm excited to see what's going to happen. thing is, um, so I've been getting the omnibuses because... Uh, I just I picked up the first omnibus because I wanted a lot of Gantz to read, and then I did two and now three, and now I, I have the omnibuses that are released so far. So the next omnibus does not come out until December. And here's the thing, is that uh, I'm kind of OCD about how things look on my shelf, so like now that I have the omnibuses, I think it would be weird to go to the individual volumes to put on a shelf. I know, that's like super weird, right? But... I feel like I've been doing the omnibuses so far, and I want to continue doing the omnibuses. Um, I want to continue doing the three-in-ones when it comes to Gantz. I don't want to wait till December to read what happens next. And I know I can go online and find it and read chapter by chapter, volume by volume, but again, I'm a weird guy, and I really like reading things on pages um, rather than on a screen. So I think I might wait for the next omnibus to actually be released to grab it. Uh, so it'll be two months, so that sucks, and I'll be living in a cliffhanger, and I might break. I might just want to read more of Gantz, uh, and go online and, and read some more and review it for you guys. I haven't really decided yet. It'll be an impulse thing, because I am still reading Hunter x Hunter, but I'm almost caught up with that. That'll be done, and then, uh, you know, I will need new manga to read, um, and there's a few I want to go back to and a few I want to start, so I, I have things that will tie me over until Gantz gets back, but because I am such a fan of Gantz, um, I kind of, I, I'm curious to see what happens next, especially now that it's gotten past where the anime goes, so I'm in uncharted territory, really excited for it, so I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I'm just throwing that out there that it might not be until Omnibus 4 comes out that I review more Gantz, but I appreciate the people that have watched these Gantz reviews, because it's a very niche thing. I know a lot of people aren't into Gantz, and I know a lot of people don't probably want to watch a guy talking for a half an hour into a camera about a manga. But for you, those that you that do, I really appreciate it. Um, and please, share your thoughts, 
of Gantz down below of everything that happens in this omnibus. You can give me some teases about what I'm expecting to happen next. Like, don't spoil anything big, anything major, but definitely let me know, like, oh, dude, dude you know, you're going to love this when this happens and throw some teases in. I like stuff like that. I like teases. I like being teased, ladies. I like being teased. But <laughs> I don't like being spoiled. So uh, find the balance. Comment down below. Thank you very, very much, much for watching this. Um, like this video. Give it a thumbs up so more Gantz fans can see it. Subscribe if you want to subscribe.